Khaled Al Ali was talking to Alex Last about his father, the cartoonist Naji Al Ali, whose murder in London 30 years ago serves to highlight the potential dangers of simply trying to portray the world how one sees it. Those dangers were more recently illustrated by attacks on the French satirical magazine Charlie Hebdo and the threats to Danish interests after the Jelens Posten newspaper published cartoons depicting the Prophet Muhammad. I'm joined now by the cartoonist Martin Rosen, whose work appears in, among other publications, The Guardian here in Britain. Um, Martin, is yours a dangerous profession? It always has been and always will be because um, the whole purpose of satire is to tell truth to power while laughing at power at the same time. And actually, the laughter is always more dangerous than the truth because they cannot stand the idea that we're laughing at them and their grandeur and their power and all the rest of it. So you just look throughout history at the fate of satirists. Uh, For example, the Gestapo notoriously had a death list of cartoonists in this country, had Britain been invaded by the Nazis, uh, they would have rounded up about 20 cartoonists and instantly executed them. They included not just people like David Lowe and Illingworth, who were famous political cartoonists, but William Heath Robinson, who is most famous for doing drawings of ridiculous contraptions. But he'd done some stuff about the Nazis and ridiculous contraptions, and that was enough to sentence him to death. Uh, I receive death threats on a regular basis, but I always work on the basis they don't count if they come by email. It's just somebody who has been so utterly disgusted and shocked on somebody else's behalf, invariably, so deeply offended that they want to do something far more offensive than laughing at somebody in power and, and kill me. And it's bizarre that people get so incensed by this stuff. Well, you use the phrase speak truth to power, but truth is very subjective. Is speaking truth to power what the cartoonist genuinely does, or is it that he or she is simply being rude about people or ideas with which he or she does not agree? I think that's part of it, but mostly it's the idea of mocking the powerful. That's where the danger comes in, because the powerful and their supporters cannot endure the idea of mockery because mockery is the most powerful weapon against them you just point at uh, somebody like hitler and his stupid charlie chaplin moustache and the fact he's wearing shorts and this is risible so any despotism be it secular or religious will defy people not to laugh at the absurdities inherent in them and if you do laugh at them then your life is in danger but um mockery is, is part of the armory of satire the part of armory of human beings we mock each other all the time we laugh at each other all the time we laugh at all the terrible things that life throws at us and that includes our bodily functions as well as our leaders it's just something which is profoundly human but it's unendurable well, for the, su- the powerful on the subject of uh, bodily functions <laughs> how looking back over history the history of cartooning have the, the red lines, the lines in the sand, so to speak, shifted? Because if you go all the way back to Hogarth, uh, very rude about uh, pretty much everyone and everything around him in the 1700s in Britain, it felt like nothing was beyond the pale for him. Um, whereas today, there certainly will be people who would be thinking very carefully about depicting images of the Prophet Muhammad in a mocking way because of the potential consequences uh, as hands reach out over borders to uh, exact some sort of revenge. Well, that's certainly true. And after the uh, Charlie Hebdo killings, I proposed to the Guardian that I do a cartoon of the Prophet Muhammad with his head in his hand so he wouldn't see his face, wearing a Not In My Name t-shirt. And they decided that actually that was too dangerous for Guardian staff working in the Middle East. And I respect that decision. Actually, it's too dangerous for me as well. I'd have had to go into hiding, which is preposterous. But it actually gets to the point where you're not allowed to say anything about anything. A few years ago, I just stopped doing cartoons about Israel because I was fed up of every time I did a cartoon about Israel, getting literally thousands of emails accusing me of being a a worse anti-Semite than Hitler, which is just not.